Oh, hello and welcome everyone to our lovely webinar this evening. Um, so as we are really thrilled that we have our two lovely guests and just in case anyone doesn't know, they did a webinar with them, um, Beck and Lou just a couple of weeks ago because these two lovely ladies work um, around addictions and they were speaking to Beck and Lou. So if you enjoy this webinar, that might be one that's worth going and having a find as well to have a look at that one because that was great. Um, so do you want to tell us a little bit about you, you know, who you are and what you do a little bit um, and then we can kind of get into a bit of a conversation and see where this goes. Okay, great. great. Do you want to begin or do you want me to? <laughs> well, I'll say that I'm, I'm Joy and uh, she and I are uh, a couple and we work together. We uh, co-facilitate and co-coach slash mentor together in our work, mm -hmm. um, which is fantastic. Uh, I guess I should say our, we have an umbrella business called Real Change Mentoring. And um, underneath that umbrella is our Wise Caring, which is our work with um, family members of people with addictions. And it's a very, uh, Judy can talk more to this, but it's an extremely underserved group of people. Yeah. You know, yeah, because all of the attention goes to the person with the addiction mm -hmm. and the family member is just kind of left, you know, on their own. Or maybe they'll get a, a little something thrown at them of, you know, talking about how codependent they are. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'll go ahead and say more. Yeah. So um, just a little bit of my background. I've worked in the addictions and mental health field for just about 40 years and um, and most of the work that I did was in in agencies uh, where they used a pretty the the traditional model of you know 12 steps mm -hmm. and um, and it was really clear to me when I was working in those agencies that family members really got almost no support and no treatment so I've really, you know, ever since I started doing work privately, it was like one of the things that I really wanted, there was the group of people I really wanted to focus on. Yeah. Um, because these folks are also isolated mm -hmm. and uh, because of the shame around addiction, uh, I think it tends to, you know, isolate them more or they isolate themselves more. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, originally I really wanted to make the, the, the whole idea of being online was also to reach more people just in their, you know, in their homes and, and um, help them start to feel more, of, more a part of a community, I guess. And, um, and then when I, when I learned what is exposed to the principles, it was like, oh my God, this is like, this could really, really help family, family members. Mm -hmm. and, and at the same time, I also could see that it was, um, there was a lot of sensitivity needed yes. because, you know, they're not, it, they, most family members don't think that they have a problem. Um, they think that it's their loved one that has a problem. And so they're not really looking towards themselves and they just want to know, how am I going to fix this person? So, um, you know, it's to, to introduce the notion to them that, you know, their thinking is what's creating their suffering around their loved one is, can sometimes be a little bit of a hard sell. You know, it's like, <laughs> no, it's really true is this person needs to get fixed. Because if they weren't, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be. Yes. Yeah. Right. We, yeah, we work with people around relationships and it's exactly the same because, you know, if someone comes and says, this other person, if they were different, you know, it would be all right. So how do I, how do I make them be different? So I feel okay kind of thing. And yeah, it is a very gentle introduction of kind of saying, actually bring this back to you. And it doesn't always go down brilliantly at first, does it? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But then but, when it's seen, there's such freedom in it, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Well, and, and also, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the people that we work with are, are parents, yeah. parents of 
I'm one who's addicted. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, that's an even in some ways more sensitive because they, they're so, they're, they're very identified with their role as mother or father. And they have very, very, I would say, strong uh, thoughts about how they should be as that parent and, you know, who that, who their child is in relationship to them. Yeah. And so it's, you know, it's a really, yeah, I, it can be somewhat challenging, yeah. it, it I, particularly in the beginning, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I know when we, the first time we had a conversation with you, I could straight away, I could see how amazing it would be to bring kind of all of us together because we talk about predominantly about relationships and what we point to is first and foremost, the relationship with self. And I know everything you've just said there about the role of a parent. I know um, some time back, Deb was having a bit of um, a bumpy ride with her daughter. <laughs> and one of the things in, in, cause we live together and work together, we have this conversation kind of all the time and when stuff comes up for us that's where we go we kind of go okay so come back to me and we saw exactly what you just said what you just said there that kind of we put kind of almost on a pedestal but I'm her mom she's my daughter that means <laughs> fill in the blank <laughs> and you know whether that's I mean it wasn't for Deb's daughter it wasn't anything to do with addiction but whether it's addiction or, or anything addiction to behavior maybe yeah. that was kind of you could really see for both of them and yeah. this is what you this is exactly what I saw because it really looked um it, it wasn't alcohol or, or drugs or anything but it really looked like my daughter was doing something and as a mom there was a you know there was something and when it's kind of yeah you know, even when we had the conversation and I you know I know this and you know I've been around this understanding <laughs> quite a while and it was kind of like yeah you've got to bring this back to you and I'm like I just how where this this is her this is absolutely her yeah. <laughs> so yeah even <laughs> someone that's kind of sharing this day so, after day yeah. it's like how do I bring that how mm. can that be me <laughs> it, it, it was a real it was a very very interesting time to go okay then you know how do I see my role in this and like and, and I really can identify with that bit where you say we are so identified with the role as a parent and and you know it's my my daughter's grown up you know she's she's got a baby of her own but it was like i'm her mom so i need to fix this or i'm you know sort of like this and yeah so i can absolutely see a lot of sticky thinking there it's like kind of trying to move through treacle and trying to pick apart <laughs> <laughs> So how would, so, you know, can you share with us some of the things that maybe you, you know, what, what might you do with a client in that situation? How, you know, how might you dive in to help or? Yeah. Well, it's, it's really interesting because um, one of the things that kind of one of the, the, the ideas or the principles that I start from is that, um, to acknowledge, you know, because family members get labeled. They're either, they're codependent or they're enablers, right? Or they're both. And, and it's like, what that does actually is it pathologizes their caring. And one of the places that I start with people is to really acknowledge the fact, look, you care, <laughs> you deeply care. And, and in a way that's, that's saying you're okay. Mm. You know, your, your impulse as a, as a parent or as a spouse, it doesn't really matter, is to care because you love that person, right? So, so I, I like to move from that very positive place. It's like, you're okay. You're, you're, you're whole, you're healthy, you care. And you're doing the best that you can, given what you know. Yeah, their desire to to make a difference is right. totally fine. Yeah, it's like let's look at what you know, what's really going on, and what really might might help to might really help the situation instead of just trying, you know, throw things at it, you know, as it comes up in mind. Right. And then we start to talk. So we start from the, from the position of wholeness. And then we start to talk about how thought works, you know, and, and to really 
continue to have that conversation and to under, try to understand, well, you know, what do they actually see about that? What do they really understand? And so it's always, it's always a movement of really wanting to understand how their minds work and, and to give them the opportunity through asking them questions for them to see actually how their minds work. And people do, you know, I mean, the more you, the more you talk about this, the more you, you just tell them, you know, this is, this is actually what you're experiencing. This is the nature of thought. This is how your mind works. But I always like to start from the place that, you know what, you're 100% okay right now. And even though your son or daughter or your spouse doesn't, they don't look okay, the same thing is happening for them. Their experience is being created by thought. And um, yeah, so that's, that's basically, you know, the way that we, we work with folks. It's really interesting because when you're sharing that, I mean, obviously, you know, it, it was, it's been a little while since I had this kind of thing with my daughter, but um, when, even when we talk about it, I can kind of go there, you know, I can feel what it, what it was like to kind of have that situation. And even as you are just saying then, Hey, do you know what? Start from a place of you being okay. And what do you know? I know that was what Beck kind of said to me, even, you know, Beck just kind of said, okay, so let, let's come back. Do you know you're okay? Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yes. I know I'm okay. No matter what happens. Yes. I know I'm okay. So what do you know? Do you know that Laura's okay? Yes. In spite of what's going on. Yes. Yes. I, yes. I, I know that. I know that. Okay. So I know those two things. So then, you know, how does thought work? Oh yeah. Bugger. Caught me again. <laughs> <hasn't it? laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's so, to me, it is so powerful to start from wholeness. Like, I feel like there's, I, I, before I came kind of into the principles conversation, I used to do kind of psychotherapy work and that kind of thing. And everything in that arena appears to start from a position of somebody being broken, needing fixing. And to turn yeah. this 180 degrees mm. the other way and start from wholeness is diff like so different and so powerful that I mean that conversation Deb and I you know that she just shared there that was maybe a 10 minute conversation because she didn't need any more than just being reminded like just yeah. being pointed back to that truth and that's as soon as we see that we yeah. are whole it's actually there isn't a problem here and the other person I think it's really powerful as well when we because I think like you say as as somebody you know if you're looking at someone else it's very when you care about someone it is very much if you see them struggling with anything you want it, it you want to fix them you kind of move into of course, that. Yeah. and whatever your relationship to that person you know whether you are their parent or their sister or their best friend or their spouse or whatever it's kind of like I want you to feel better and you kind of want them to feel better because you want to feel better. So it is, but it, it definitely, it's coming from meaning well. And then if yes. you've kind of had this message that somebody who, who is in that position, you know, if it is, if everyone, and let's face it, you know, when people do have, um, problems with addiction generally speaking people you know most people are kind of getting mm, mm, yes they need sorting out they need fixing they can't they can't carry on like that yes they need help they need to change so there's this kind of belief that you're kind of caught into that they they need to be different they need help they need to be changed so it's really i think it's incredibly powerful and I know kind of with my children, as I say, it's not addiction particularly, unless it's addiction to behavior made, but I can absolutely see that place of when I forget that they are okay, that they are whole and complete, it's really easy for me to fall into the trap of thinking, and are the people that I love and I'm in relationship to, you know, in various ways. You know, I know if ever you get upset straight, my first, the first kind of thing is I need to, I need to save Beck, uh, you know, and, and then, and then you kind of have that. Yeah. Do you really? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think for, for family members, um, 
it can feel so much bigger because it can be life and death. Yeah. You know? And so it's, it's not, it's more than, it's just your thinking, you know, because it's like we are also acknowledging that, yes, you know, the place that, that they're caught in, in their, you know, their loved one is caught in their thought and in their addiction and habit can be really, really intense, you know, and not knowing if they're going to be getting a call saying that they're, you know, dead or in the hospital or in jail or whatever. So, mm. you know, we acknowledge the um, kind of the scope, so to speak, of, yeah, um, yeah. of what they're dealing with and, you know, your reaction to it is based on your, your thinking and feeling about it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and to start to get, you know, a little bit of space, you know, from, right, <laughs> in, in, you know, that automatic reaction and, yeah. you know, start to see, oh, wait a second, there is, you know, there's a, a moment here where I have some, you know, some choice and some understanding of, of what's happening and what my uh, reaction, you know. Well, and that's the other thing I find. It's just, it's actually totally amazing to me. But I often find that, that people, that parents or spouse, whoever, they actually already know, know. Mm -hmm. they already actually have, have some ideas about what would be a, a really good way of approaching their situation. You know, they, they have answers. We, um, questions that allow them to see, oh, yeah, I actually know what I need to do in this situation. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. They always do. You know, so it's it's also providing them the space and the and the and the pause for reflection that allows them to see something yeah. more clearly because people people do know. Yeah. And uh, and that's always it's always a, it's just such a great moment, you know, because it's like they have the answer. They have the answer. You know? Yeah. <laughs> we worked with uh, um, a mother uh, last week. Uh, her son is very much in the midst of his addiction and and she was just in a place of total overwhelm what do I he's like getting out from where he is and you know his counselor wants him to come home here but I really don't want that and and you know there's this other option or there's just like walk away from him you know and she's like I don't know what to do I don't know what to do I don't know what to do but she totally knew what she really wanted to you know what she really wanted and it was just, you know, to kind of talk and let her just kind of calm down a little bit. And, and, and then Judy, you know, asked her some questions and she totally knew the, the next best thing to do. Yeah. But it was just so covered up by all of the, all the, all the thinking and, yeah. and the feeling. It was beautiful. Yeah. Mm. And I think very often in that situation, sometimes you're, you're either judging yourself or you're believing society or other people, you know, if you kind of know what to do, but then it's kind of, but that'll make you look like a bad mom or yeah. I don't know what <laughs> such a person will think if you do that or whatever. And then you kind of get into this headspace, maybe I'm wrong then, maybe I shouldn't. And I think, you know, this understanding kind of being reminded of that wisdom that we all have and kind of being told, you know what, you can trust your wisdom. There is something in that. There is something in what you know to do. Because I have definitely seen that for myself. You know, there's been times when I've kind of thought, yeah, I, oh, I do not know, but no, no, I can't. That, that isn't a good choice. That isn't a good thing to do. And yet, as I've been given the space to kind of play with that, then I've seen that when I do that, even if sometimes, you know, there's a bit of backlash at first, inevitably it kind of, at some point I kind of see, yeah, that, that I was right about that. And I did know that and I knew to do that. But I just yeah. think we haven't been kind of taught to trust ourselves in that way. And it's yeah. really easy to get caught up in what will other people think, especially when you have been in a situation like that with a family member. Like you say, you've maybe been hiding it or you've maybe felt judged or you felt shameful or, or blamed yourself or whatever. You're already kind of there. So <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And it is that, you know, that, well, I mean, think, I think that with a three principles understanding, you totally trust yeah. that the person has the answers for themselves. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And I think that just extending, I mean, extending that trust, you know, to them, uh, you know, and saying, you know, like, you actually do know. So let's really look at it from that, from that perspective. You, you already have some answers for yourself. And then that provides them the space and the opportunity in that direction. Because a lot of time it's just that we're not looking in that direction. Mm-hmm. And in a sense, you're giving them permission, I suppose, yeah. to look in that direction. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, that trust is that one of my favorite words, trust. And that to me is kind of what we're pointing to when we talk about kind of relationships and, and it's starting with self is trusting first and foremost that you have that wisdom. And that like I always say, we have the easiest job in the world because I don't have to have the answers for anybody else. I can just yeah. trust that what I turn up with is enough. And, and, you know, and that gives somehow that gives people space to come up with their own answers. And I can yeah. trust that. And that for me is where this starts and ends. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can trust that and that's enough. Yeah. yeah. And when, what a, go on, sorry. Yeah. What a relief that we <laughs> to know. <that laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. yeah, totally. Yes. Yeah. There is yeah. way less for us to do here than what we feel like. We don't even have a part-time job, let alone a full-time job here. <laughs> but don't tell anyone. That yeah, yeah. On this webinar, we work we'll really hard. hard. <laughs> we work really, really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Others. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, and that's, you know, it's so interesting because I, I would say that I mean, this wasn't true all the time, but there were certainly periods of time where I felt doing uh, counseling or therapy was a burden. Mm, yeah. Because I was trained to think that I had, I was responsible. Yeah. Yeah. To get mm. And it was just like, uh, you know? <laughs> and uh, so having this, you know, really being, learning about this understanding and realizing that there is no way that I have the answers for someone else uh, is, it was such a relief. I mean, it just, it kind of infused my work with, you know, kind of a a renewal and, Mm -hmm. and just, Oh yeah, this is great. You know? Um, So yeah, it's, uh, it's quite, it's quite a shift. Yeah. And it makes me think of, too, the people that we work with um, that come to us for addictions also, you know, not feeling like, oh, we have to really help them to stop this addiction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's, not, that's not our job, you know, it's just yeah. a point. And, yeah, I, I think sometimes if people would hear our conversations with people you know, they'd be like, well, when are you going to talk about their drinking? Or- <laughs> when are you going to give them their 10 steps to stop drinking? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and wow, you know, that's, in- and that's a huge learning for me. I mean, to really know that the appearance, right, the person is actually clearly in a suffering. Uh, physically, emotionally, in so many ways, and still using, and sometimes using a lot, 100% okay. Not, there's not a problem with them. Do they have a behavior that has consequences? For sure. But that doesn't mean anything about them. You know, they're still 100% whole and healthy. <laughs> and um, and I, I think that can be a challenge mm. uh, when, when we're working with people. Because, you, you know, you, with your eyes, you see 
what's happening, you know, you hear what's happening. So anyway, it's, it's just been an ongoing and, you know, a learning and deepening in the knowing that, that person is whole. Yeah. So, yeah. We have someone that we've worked with, well, Judy worked with a little longer, but we've worked together for a couple of years. Who's very active in, in drinking and, she loves talking with us because we see her as whole. We don't see her as someone with an addiction, with the, the, this huge problem. We're the only person in her life that, you know, that sees her that way. And it's, it's so, um, it's such a comfort to her. It's so important to her to, um, to have us. And will her drinking change? We don't know. We don't know. We keep pointing her in the direction, and but doesn't beat herself up as much. No, she doesn't nearly as much for her drinking. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things have changed in her life. But you know, that's that. Yeah. But I think that's an amazing thing because mm -hmm. you know, as I, I said, you did a, a webinar with them, um, Beck and Lucy, and you know, Lucy when she first came across this understanding you know she came because she wanted to change her drinking habits and what is she eight years in and all of a sudden she's had this huge insight and she's now three months you know she hasn't drank anything for three months and it's like I think one of the biggest things that Beck and I had to learn was patience and to see Lucy, you know, to see through that and to see the wholeness and completeness in her. And it's just fascinating to have conversations with her now about what was going on for her then. And yeah, you know, she, she was around this and she, she saw so much and so many things dropped away, but just not that drinking. And it was like, until, until it did. And, you know, it, it's really, really interesting to kind of see that. And it humbles you to kind of know that, yeah, we don't have the answers and this isn't on our time. And we don't, you know, we, we don't decide when somebody hears something and what they hear. So it kind yeah. of takes it off your shoulders and it also humbles you and keep, you know, you can't kind of get, oh yeah, come to see me and it'll all just be perfect. It's like, I don't know, but, you know, turn up and, and let's see what happens. So shall we see if um, anyone would like to join in with the conversation or if anyone has got questions, I'm sure we can think of plenty else to speak to if they haven't, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> if anyone would like to comment or ask a question or <laughs> please, Feel free to unmute yourself or wave and we will do it. I'd like to say something if I, I can. Yes, um, it's really struck me, what are the four you, but, but listening to um, Joy and Judy, that there is such a calming and comforting place that you guys are coming from. And... With my work, I work one-to-one, -one, doing privately work, but I also do community-based work. And it was coming to, to mind the work that we did with the homeless. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was where we really learned how life works through us rather than against us. Because we were kind of still really fresh to the principles when we... Um, had the nerve, if you like, to, to, to <laughs> do these programs. And, and there was one guy, as you were talking, it just kept on coming to mind, and he was very restless. And he had a backstory where he, his marriage had broken down, he wasn't allowed to see his children, and he drank over not being able to see his children. Um, and drugs start coming in to that as well. But he kept on coming back to the meetings. And then one of the days, he was always late, and his phone would always be on. But one of the times he was there before ours, and he says, I've got to tell you guys, this shit really works, doesn't it? This really works. <laughs> I feel the best. He says, I've not had a drink all week. He says, but I just feel as if I'm high. <laughs> so the group were really surprised when they turned up. But, but this was the thing that got me. And one of the women here says, you look very different. He says, and I feel it. And she says, well, if you could do anything in the world, what would you like to do? 
we were like, oh, this is going to be interesting. He says, I want to be an Elvis impersonator. <laughs> so we, we just looked, Tony and I looked at one another and was like, did we, sorry, what did you just say? He says, I've always wanted to impersonate Elvis. But it's that one thing, that feeling of being that, it got him through everything. Wow. And, he, and he says, because no one could take that away from me. My behavior lost me my children, lost me my marriage, lost me. He says, but being that, but this is the thing, this is the magic, I think, when we truly see beyond. The next day, he goes past the charity shop and he says to the woman, to a thrift store, and he says to the woman, you don't have any Elvis costumes, do you? And she laughed and she says, you're not going to believe this. She says, but someone came in last week and dropped one off and says, could anybody use this? And there was a tailor two doors down. It was way too big for him. And the person did it for free. A month later, and, he, and then he goes into a pub in Brighton and he says, um, he didn't speak as if I want to be. He told them he was. And Elvis, because he says, I don't feel any limitation now. Yeah. Wow. I don't feel any limit. So what I'm getting at also was like that caring and comforting that perhaps that was the first time he ever felt that within himself. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's the grace of change. When that opens up inside someone, we don't know how it's going to change them. We thought it would have been, can you guys help me write a letter to take to the court to get my children? But no, it was an Elvis impersonator. <laughs> <laughs> and he did, I mean, and he says, will you guys come? And we were like, absolutely. But we were flying out to Canada the night he did it. But seemingly it went down a storm. And his life has changed now. He has seen his children. So there is a, a knock-on effect from that. But it, it, it just, for some reason, that's what came into my consciousness when you guys were, were talking, was that we never know. When we don't get in there and try to sort, and we just truly come from that calming, comforting place, People feel that. Why? Because it's who they are. Yeah. And perhaps that's the first time. Because I, I don't know about the guys you work with, but with the homeless, um, there's so many complex needs and they're directed from pillar to post. You've got to do this. You have to do this. You have to. And we were the first to it came and says, right, okay, we'll be here from seven till nine. We ask you to turn off your, your telephone if you've got one. Now, what do you guys want from us? And they all kind of, oh, okay, what we'll use after then? No, honestly, what would you like from us? And perhaps, again, that was the first time that someone asked them rather than telling. Yeah. yeah. And that, that just, that taught us so much. Yeah, mm, that's beautiful. Really yeah, that's but yeah, that's what I just, calming and comforting. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Beautiful story. Mm, yeah. Yeah. What I love about that story is that like in no way from, you know, I know I've heard you share that before and, and maybe do a bit more background on the group and stuff. And in no way did you turn up thinking, I know what that guy could do that would help him. He could be an Elvis in person. Because <laughs> no way would you have come up with that from Absolutely. knowing that guy and working with him. But that's his wisdom and look where it's taken him, you yeah. know? That's yeah. amazing that he knew that. And that comes to me so often when I work with people and they come when you ask them that kind of stuff and they come back you're thinking there is no way in hell I would have come up with that idea for you <laughs> but thank goodness you've got your own wisdom <laughs> yeah I love that yeah it's always such a better idea than what anything we <laughs> yeah yeah, the thing is when somebody comes up with something from their own wisdom, it works for them, doesn't it? You know, I've sometimes been sat there and I'm thinking, don't give, don't, don't let your face give away that you're thinking, what, what, what? <laughs> and you kind of want to say, no, 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 no. I know what you should do. <laughs> keep, That's such a good idea for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it is amazing, isn't it? It's just so lovely when people do start telling you, well, what I'm going to do is this and this and this and this. And then you're like, yeah, okay, cool. I would never have come up with that, but (laughs) let's see what happens. And so many amazing things can unfold from that.
Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's brilliant, brilliant, oh. funny story. Mm. Funny but true. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone else have any kind of questions or anything they want to share on this topic? Oh, Pam. Can you unmute yourself, Pam? Or? Yeah, is that, am I undone? Yes, you are. <laughs> you're undone. Um, yeah, you're undone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was... I was listening to I, I listened to Rong and Chatterjee's um, podcast quite a bit, and he interviewed Gabor Mate again last week, and he did a an interview with him I think about three years ago, about and Gabor Mate one of his big things isn't it is about addiction, and I think what I learned I think from that was that almost everybody is addicted to something even though they might not acknowledge it mm. and that that we talk about drugs and alcohol as being the two things which are always pointed to but actually there's one heck of a lot more than that and um I, I sort of start during this time. Interestingly, I find myself completely addicted to carbohydrates, <laughs> which, um, and really, we're just doing it to make ourselves feel better. Um, whatever it is, we just we do it to numb the brain or make ourselves feel better or whatever it, whatever reason we're doing it. But we do these things, and I, I suppose my a big hope that I have is that the, the the stigma around alcohol and drugs is removed when they are all lumped in with all the addic addictive behaviours that we have, um, and and that underneath it all we are okay. So I think probably I, my my question yes. would be just the the what, that what we're talking about in this uh, uh, is applicable to to everybody really is that tr is that right have i got the right idea yes 100 percent. yes i do <laughs> because uh everybody i mean you know depending on how you define addiction but if you define addiction as as repetitive behavior that people do to feel better I mean, that's a very simple uh, definition, but that is what's happening. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's something we can't give so up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Usually. I mean. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're doing it because thought is creating a feeling and mm -hmm. we don't like the feeling. It's uncomfortable or whatever. And so we do something to distract ourselves and we reach for a substance a lot of tv or we um you know exercise all the time i mean it can be anything we overeat it doesn't really matter at all yeah and i think when when we talk to people and kind of uh talk about the stigma of addiction and and just start saying you know really all that's going on is you have a habit of thought and you follow it a habit of thought and feeling that you follow mm -hmm. You know, because in, in, in their mind and in society's mind, it's so much more than that. It has so much meaning has been layered onto it. But to just kind of go, really, here's what's happening. You know, it's thought and feeling creates a response. Repeat. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and when that starts getting seen, it opens up so much. You know, be, a lot because of all of the shame and guilt, you know, that, that goes along with, I shouldn't be doing this. Why do I do this? I don't want to do this. And, and, you know, the feelings of helplessness and hopelessness. And, and, and then to start to see like, wow, it's maybe it really could be that simple if it's what's going on mm -hmm. and, and start having those little cracks and, in the understanding and, and seeing of that. It, it's amazing, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, I um, a, a good few years back now, not long after I'd come across this understanding, <laughs> I was invited to give a talk um, for the JAT Club, which is in Birmingham, a, a thing that Michael Behan, I don't know whether any of you are on Facebook and a part of the, the JAT Club, just a thought, J-A-T, just a thought. And I, we knew Michael Behan because um, we're originally from the Midlands and that's where he did and where he does all his stuff. And he kind of asked me to come and speak at one of their meetings. And they, you know, what he runs, everything that he does is for, um, ex addicts or families of addicts it's all that kind of stuff and I was a little bit like well you know all my stuff is around relationships so I went and I, I talked about that and the impact it had there and then I realized with the conversations I had with everybody afterwards it was no different you know what I was pointing to it was kind of like I did this stuff that I you know I got into trouble in relationships because I wanted to feel better and so I had repetitive behavior around people pleasing and you know a, a, what I allowed somebody to do to me and stuff like that but it was no different to if it had been drugs or alcohol or you know I was addicted to a person or my thinking about that person. but it just it really became clear to me during you know while I was speaking and how many people in the audience were kind of going like this <laughs> and then afterwards the conversations I had it's kind of it's just no different and you know when I was speaking about my daughter before I can see it again it's just no different it's just these cycles of behavior that we get into because of the thinking that we have in that moment that looks true and it is yeah. it is various things that then have stigma attached to them and people are kind of going yeah but this is different you know my stuff was around abusive relationships it's like yeah that's not for and I'm like well yes it, it absolutely is it's no we just label it as something and kind of make it make it a thing and it's just not and bringing it back down to seeing yeah we, we, it's just we're doing the best we can with the thinking that we have that looks true in that moment and if we look in yeah. that direction you just never know when you're just going to see through it and go, oh my gosh <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> that was a big pile of thought that looked like something <laughs> big steaming pile of thought <laughs> yeah. absolutely yeah. I was stuck for something else and smell very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, it's really I mean it's what, when you start to see that it's it's life moving through you in the form of thought and feeling. That's all that's happening. Mm -hmm. And and it's like, oh yeah, that's happening for everybody, regardless. You know, this is the way life shows up for human beings. Yeah. Is through thought and feeling. Not a problem. There's not a problem anywhere there. And I mean that's it's easy to say, not always so easy to see. But once you see it, oh my God, right? <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Mm. <laughs> I think Sid nailed it when he said, if we just learn not to be afraid of our experience. I think he was onto something yeah. there. I think that mm -hmm. man was onto something. <laughs> yeah. well, and I love too, it, you know, it seems like, like us, we have such um, a good time. Yeah. talking about this like you guys do yeah. you know I mean there's moments of course it's like yeah let's get you know <laughs> kind of serious here you know about something <laughs> but, of, right. but it's like when when you really start to see the um I don't know the 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 beauty the 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 hilarity of it all the compassion of it all the craziness of it all you know it's we definitely bring a lot of uh, a lot of humor to uh, working with people, and it's so wonderful. It just you know, there isn't a heaviness about it, and let's talk about your addiction, and then you know, or, <laughs> you, know you know, and and people are so grateful for that, and it's so wonderful, and and you know, 
know, and then things really can start being seen in, in a different light. And I yeah. see that, you know, you two are, are, are that also. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. I don't know what you mean. We're very serious. <laughs> <laughs> I get the Brit that's serious. <laughs> We're serious about having fun. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to share something? Can you un unmute, or do you want me to do? It? Do you want us to do it? I'll do it. I'll yeah. do it. All right. It's wonderful to be here. I've been studying with Joy and Judy for some time now, and so I'm honored to be here with you all. And I love the laughter, and it evokes this question: What about meeting people where they are? So that's my question. How mm -hmm. do you, because the focus in the last few minutes has been on the lightness and the humor and the, so I'm just curious about that piece too. Yeah, and I think to me, that's exactly what Joy was kind of saying there. There are moments, you know, I don't, you know, if somebody comes to us, I mean, as, as we've said, we, we work more with relationships than, than addictions particularly, but you know, I, if someone comes to me and they're in a situation or they're struggling with something, I'm not immediately going to start kind of going, ah, oh, well, you know, it's all like half, but yeah, we absolutely meet someone where they are because I've been there. So I know, you know, when I, Deb's my auntie, um, I turned up on her doorstep after I'd had a bit of a breakdown with, with work and a few other crazy things going on around me. And you know, she wasn't there going, oh, you know, it's fine. We'll just have a laugh about it. In those moments, I needed her to be with me and go, yeah, do you know what, Beck? I'm going to sit with you. I'm going to hold your hand and we'll work this through because life happens. You know, life happens. And we all have those moments where we need someone to hold our hand and kind of go, yeah, this is going to be OK. And there comes a time when it is about being lighthearted and fun with this conversation. And the invitation is and that for me is where the, the innate wisdom comes in. Like in a given moment, I can trust if I'm going to be lighthearted or if I'm going to hold someone's hand and give them a hug and say, right now, all you need to know is that I'm here with you. And I kind of, you know, we all have that in us to know when those moments are. Yeah. And equally, there are moments when someone's absolutely in the depths of despair and you're like, do you know what? Let's have a laugh and a joke. What's the funniest joke you've heard this week? <laughs> and that kind of comes through me and I can trust when, when I know to do that. So yeah, absolutely, I'm, I'm with someone where they are. And then I gently guide them over to where I am. Because <laughs> hey, that's fun and, and that's what life's for. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree. I mean, you know, clearly we bring humor. Well, humor just arises. Yeah, yeah. we don't bring it. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, but there, there's many, many times when if some on you know is just like you said in despair or just can't you know see their way into a you know into a better better place in themselves yeah we're we're just present with them mm -hmm. you know we're just there to listen and to honor where they are and um and you know just hold you know hold them in a in a in a field of of uh compassion and uh, yeah and that where they are is okay. You know, yeah. It doesn't need to doesn't change. Matter. Yeah. Mm. I think for me, it's kind of what I look to myself is no matter what is going on, do I know that they're okay and that I'm okay? You know, for me personally, when I'm with someone like that, because I know um, uh, one of my, a good friend of my daughter, her, um, her baby died during childbirth and my daughter was, beside herself um, and she came to me absolutely beside herself and it would have been very easy for me to get into the story of this terrible 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 thing and, and I did cry with her you know I held my daughter and I cried and there was no way like Beck said that was the thing that came to my mind when you, you know there was no way I was going to kind of say oh this is perfectly all right let's just have a laugh you know it a hundred percent not you know um and it, it was a, a really a, a difficult time but what I you know for me what I saw was I was most helpful to my daughter when I knew that she was okay and I knew that I was okay even even here even here it was kind of like finding that had where was my grounding in in this um and I um met with her friend and funnily enough when you were saying we ended up all sitting around laughing 
and that's kind of where it, it didn't start there but that's where it kind of ended and it was like yeah that we always have that ability and I think it's it's incredibly good for us to to kind of go there and, and do that but absolutely you trust your wisdom you know in when is the moment to do that or or they do it absolutely mm. that was <laughs> that was actually the girl herself she was kind of like oh it's time to just laugh about something isn't it you know it's, it's been so serious for a while um and we do you know we are we are wired to get to have new thoughts to see things differently to to get over things we're wired to do that and i just yeah for me it's always about right do I know that everybody here is okay, even here? <laughs> and the minute I kind of know that, that's that's to me how I would hold the space, I guess. That might be how yeah. you do that. But. Yeah, definitely. Great question. <laughs> yeah, and, and I feel like I, I'm, I'm often just following the client um, where they where they go, where they, where their minds are, you know, where they, they feel to go. And, and it's like, it's, it's, it's that I'm not, I'm not really, I may be guiding in the sense of asking questions, but they're coming up with, they're coming up with their own answers, you know, and they're having their, their own experience and their own insights in the moment. So, um, yeah, I mean, it kind of goes back to that whole thing. You know, we're not really doing, we're not really doing it. We're just there to, to ask questions, to be a support to them, you know, in their own investigation. So, yeah, it, it brings up this experience. Uh, we were working with this couple and um, both of them wanting to stop drinking. And, uh, and so we were maybe like, second or third session or something and and one of them was saying like man you know this just feels like this you know like huge barge that you know we're trying to to turn around and they're drinking yeah yeah it's oh you know it's like this huge barge and you you got to turn it but it's oh my gosh and you know and uh and what just came to me, you know, was to, to just say, there is no barge. <laughs> and, and like, just like cracked up, like, you know, in a moment, it just like broke that, you know, like, oh, we're gonna, oh, it's gonna take, we're, oh, we, you know. <laughs> and it, it was fantastic. And then, you know, when they would come back, she would, you know, they'd be talking about something and she'd go, there is no barge. <laughs> I'm like, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You never know what's coming out of your mouth. No, you don't. <laughs> Yeah, I remember we, we were working with a, a man one time and um, he, he actually had a, a phone call while we were working with him and a relation of his had, had passed away and it was the phone call was from his daughter and she was really upset and he came back and he said I had no idea what to do I was completely out of my depth I didn't know what to say I didn't know what to do and all I could do and then he reeled off all these beautiful things that he kind of shared with his daughter and that reminded me that we're kind of there to sort of say you did know what to say. You did have wisdom, but you, you, you know, we're so sure that we haven't. So sometimes I've noticed when you're with somebody, they talk themselves into something absolutely beautiful. And then my job can sometimes, because I can see them talking themselves back into, no, I'm useless. I don't. And it's kind of like, well, well, tell me again what you said here. Or can I repeat to you what you've just said here that was, and they're like, oh, because I think we can, we can miss our own wisdom sometimes. So I, you know, I think that can yeah. sometimes be really helpful to kind of go, actually, do you know what you just did? Did you hear what you just said? Did you listen to that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are yeah. definitely oftentimes pointing out, like, yeah, that's it. That's your wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that amazing, amazing things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> so has has anyone else got anything they would like to share or you know ask or anything? Oh. 
Well, I think that has been a really beautiful conversation. I don't know whether you've got anything that you would like to finish up with, um, Joy or Judy. I don't know if there's anything you'd like to add to that. Or... <clears throat> no, just really grateful for yeah. this experience. Yeah, definitely. Good having this conversation. Yeah, getting to know you guys better. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, this, yeah. yeah. And I've just loved everything that you've shared and uh, people are very lucky to have you to, to work with. So, yeah. And, and you and too. To you. So <laughs> if anybody would like to um, find out more about you, where would be a good place for them to find you guys? Um, the, our website is um, uh, realchangementoring.com. Okay. And on that site, there are two because we work really with two different groups of people, although, you know, they're all the same, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, one is Wise Caring, which is for family members of substance abusers. And the other one is Real Change Mentoring. And that's, you know, working with people that have depression, anxiety, other kinds of unwanted habits. Mm -hmm. Wise Caring is most people that are, you know, involved in substance abuse, so. Cool. And uh, and we also work with the substance abuser. So we work with the family members and also the, the substance abusers. Yeah. So go there and check us out. We also have a Facebook support group um, that's called At Your Wits End, and that's for family members of, uh, of uh, substance abusers. Great. Great. If anyone can't find you and they know us too, if you reach out to us, we will be able to put you in touch with them. We'll, we'll find them somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks. Yes. Yes. Thank you. coming to visit you next yes. to, to the UK. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Wherever out of this lockdown, it would be lovely to have you yeah, come visit. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. It would be amazing. Yeah, no. Brilliant. Um, and it's Steve is one of the guys at our conference. So if you do get to our conference, if it happens and you get there, it would be great to have you there. So when is twenty sixth to the twenty eighth of November? Oh, great. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah thanks everyone it's been yeah really thank really you lovely. it's been lovely so really nice yeah. discussion thank yeah. you it's been Take absolutely care, beautiful bye. thank you very much bye bye, bye. bye.